The Tale of Mr. Jeremy Fisher Once upon a time, there was a frog called Mr. Jeremy Fisher. He lived in a little damp house amongst the buttercups at the edge of a pond. I'm Mr. Jeremy Fisher, live nearby a pond. I'm a happy frog, a pond, and I have a great pond. I am a frog, and I do not love you. Go ahead, because the frogs are swimming, and what's what I get? There's a lot of water. Ah, what a nice drop of rain. I think uh, I think this is a good day for fishing. I'll get some worms and go fishing and catch a dish of minnows for my dinner. If I catch more than five fish, I will invite my friends Mr. Alderman Ptolemy Tortoise and Sir Isaac Newton. Uh, the Alderman, however, eats salad. Let's see, Macintosh? Check. Galoshes? Check. Rod and basket? Check. All I need to do is hop over to the place where I keep my boat. The boat was round and green and very like the other lily leaves. It was tied to a water plant in the middle of the pond. I know a good place for minnows. Mr. Jeremy stuck his pole into the mud and fastened his boat to it. Then he settled himself cross-legged and arranged his fishing tackle. He had the dearest little red float. His rod was a tough stalk of grass, his line was a fine, long, white horsehair, and he tied a little wriggling worm at the end. Fishes come by, fishes come by. I have fished all day, I will fish all night. I sit in the rain on my lily leaf boat, but never a minnow will bob my float. Fishes come by, fishes come by. The rain trickled down his back, and for nearly an hour he stared at the float. <sighs> Oh, this is getting tiresome. I think I should like some lunch. I will. I shall punt back again amongst the water plants to eat my lunch. I will eat a butterfly sandwich and wait till the shower is over. Mmm, I love butterfly sandwiches. A great big water beetle came up underneath the lily leaf and tweaked the toe of one of his galoshes. Mr. <coughs> Jones pushed his nose up shorter out of reach and went on eating his sandwich. Once or twice, something moved about with a rustle and a splash amongst the rushes at the side of the pond. Oh dear, I trust that is not a rat. I think I'd better get away from here. How can this fishing trip get any worse? And while Mr. Jeremy sat disconsolately on the edge of his boat, sucking his sore fingers and peering down into the water, a much worse thing happened. A really frightful thing it would have been if Mr. Jeremy had not been wearing a Macintosh. Oh, 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 oh. A great big enormous trout came up with a splash and it seized Mr. Jeremy with a snap. Ow, ow, ow! And then it turned and dived down to the bottom of the pond. 
but the trout was so displeased with the taste of the Macintosh that in less than half a minute it spat him out again, and the only thing it swallowed was Mr. Jeremy's galoshes. <laughs> oh dear, that trout swallowed my galoshes. My rider basket are gone, and now my Macintosh is all in tatters. Oh my, what a mercy that was not a pike. I've lost my rod and basket, but it doesn't much matter, for I'm sure I should never have dared to go fishing again. I'll just put some sticking plaster on my fingers, and I'll see what I have in my larder. Why? It's my two very best friends. Good evening, Mr. Alderman. Hello, Mr. Jeremy Fisher. Good evening, Sir Isaac. Ah, uh, good morning, old chap. Do you like my finest black and gold waistcoat? I'm wearing it for tonight's dinner. Mr. Alderman, I know you like salad, so I I might see if I could find some lettuces for you. No need, my good man. I bought a salad in my string bag. That's very kind. Thank you, Mr. Alderman. I, I can't offer you fish like I promised, but I can offer something else for my lawn. Why not? It's a long story. I'll explain later. And instead of a nice dish of minnows, they had a roasted grasshopper with ladybird sauce, which frogs consider a beautiful treat, but I think it must have been nasty. <laughs> <laughs>